hi guys hope you're all doing well welcome back to our channel and in this video i'm going to talk about the best methods that you can adhere to in terms of planning your deployment for microsoft defender for endpoint now since we are going to talk about deployment since we are going to talk about different stages the core agenda of this video will be knowing what are the different deployment types that are available, how to prepare your environment, how to do an effective proactive inventory management in terms of going ahead and adopting any new product, right? Then we are also going to talk about stages of deployment. What are the different stages of deployments that are available and how your plan should evolve depending upon the kind of deployment that you're going to do okay so if i talk about deployment planning according to me it's a five stage process i mean it starts with deployment type then you should prepare your environment then you should have the right setup in place get the devices onboarded start monitoring and make sure everything is secured according to me this is how your deployment planning should go and i'll share some more insights in terms of why i have designed or why i think it should be a five-step process okay now think about this deployment type is very crucial in terms of planning your entire deployment strategy right when we talk about poc or evaluation it's the first stage wherein you are just evaluating your product right you may not want uh, changes to be implemented org wide so you'll keep some exceptions and just evaluate the product right the other one is pilot deployment this can be the initial stage of your org wide rollout i mean you're going to check all the combinations of different settings that are available to get the best results and then you can pick and choose that what exactly you want to roll out org wide right so if i talk about these three stages to be very precisely the first one is the evaluation for the product capability itself now once you have evaluated the product i mean you know that this is what the documentation says and this is how exactly it works then this is a kind of intelligence which will help you to plan your adoption i mean if there are 50 different capabilities that exist for a product, you may not want to go with all of them, but still you'll have a better plan because you have seen things working on the ground itself. You know what exactly works and how efficient it is to get it operationalized as soon as possible, right? Now, all these inputs that you get from product evaluation itself is actually something that is going to help you define a better blueprint in terms of the architecture right endpoint protection can be a node in the entire security framework for your enterprise but still you have to make sure that each and every aspect of endpoint protection is getting covered now if i talk about the enterprises irrespective of their sizes right be it small or be it large enterprises that define some values or some standards to have an effective POC. So a POC or evaluation may lie between five to 50 devices getting onboarded to a specific service, testing it, and then defining an outcome, right? Now, as I've said before, that pilot deployment can be a stage wherein it's the first stage or the initial customization or configuration that you are doing to get best results so that you can decide what has to be done in org wide rollout right so basically let's say for poc or evaluation you were onboarding the devices with the help of script but when we talk about pilot you are going to try all the methods which are available so that you can choose which one is the best one to choose for an org wide rollout i mean you are basically evolving the intelligence that you have or basically you are evolving the understanding for a specific product that you have so that you can get the best results altogether. now what this will lead or what this will result in is you will know your environment in a much better way altogether now what do i mean by this that let's say in my poc or in my evaluation part I was onboarding devices with scripts, right? Everything was working fine. Everything was in place. But when I targeted 
pilot deployment, when I increased the scope, I mean now approximately 200 or 300 devices are getting onboarded and I'm doing evaluation for different platforms. I came to know that for some sites or for some location, GPO is not working as expected. Or for some version of Windows, Microsoft Endpoint Manager configuration is not working as expected, right? So pilot deployment can also be a stage wherein you'll add more layer of maturity in terms of the product adoption itself. Then the last stage will be your org wide rollout itself. That means based on all the experiences that you had with POC and pilot deployment, you are going to use them as a proactive measures in terms of making sure everything is getting rolled out as expected. Now, in this case, when we talk about org wide rollout, you have to make sure every person who is a part of the system or who is there to contribute something. I mean, when we talk about endpoint protection solution or when we talk about security in general, it's not only the security team that is going to do everything for you, right? It's the IT team as well, which will be in, involved for performing a specific tasks altogether. So before you go ahead for an org wide rollout, make sure there there is a comfort level that exists for your IT team and your security team in terms of knowing the process that they have to follow in terms of familiarizing themselves with the specific console like securitycenter.windows.com or security.microsoft.com or basically they should be uh, educated enough in terms of performing a specific action altogether if required. And obviously, when we talk about org wide rollout, you are going to target all the devices and all the platforms that exist so that you can secure everything so that there should be no threat or there should be no non-compliant or a risky device that exists in your environment. So think about these aspects when you're going to plan your deployment that what exactly you're going to do. Are you planning something for POC or pilot or org wide rollout? Now, irrespective of these deployment type that you're going to select the respective stakeholders will be involved i mean it's a security project it's a security deployment that you're going to do so CISO, security head or it department make sure everybody is involved because there is a certain amount of contribution that's required from each and every team to have a successful deployment right now once you have figured out all the stakeholders the next thing is uh, inventory management that you should do for your own environment now what do I mean by this that how many endpoints you're actually going to onboard are you only going to check Windows 10 devices laptops or PCs which user has or you're also planning something big likewise protecting the mobile devices which the users have right so before you go ahead and plan or design something make sure you have done the absolute inventory management for your own environment itself now this is again something which is going to help you to define more mature model right whether I'm a, I am going to use GPO method or SCCM or Microsoft endpoint manager I mean what kind of infrastructure exists in your enterprise if you are cloud native obviously go with Microsoft Endpoint Manager. If you are using co-management, then again, steps will be different. If it is a complete on-prem environment and you have just procured the licenses for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, you may choose a GPO method, right? So analyze your environment first. I mean, what kind of environment it is and then choose the respective deployment method. Now, when we talk about security as a whole, think about this what we are discussing right now is endpoint protection right but when we talk about the current standards everything is now xdr you may have heard about this and i have covered this in a lot more detail then in this case to achieve an xdr state you need unified intelligence or you need uh, a solution that can do correlation from each and every digital state in our case it's device so you have to make sure that the integration between Microsoft Defender for Endpoint has to be done with your SIM solution. 
Now, when we talk about Microsoft, it's out of the box capability that exists with Azure Sentinel. But for sure, there are ways wherein you can query information uh, that is getting generated by Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and then feed in that into your SIM solution altogether. Now, what you have done is you have decided the deployment type. You have informed the right set of stakeholders. You know about your environment, what exactly you're going to achieve, what should be your end goal. But the most important part is, as I said before, the right set of roles and features or access should be in place. I mean, for your Microsoft Defender for Endpoint console, if there is something that has to be checked by a security analyst, they should have access. If there is something that has to be checked by an IT team, they should have access. So make sure you have the right set of role-based access control available or configured on the portal itself for the different teams altogether. Now, this is also something which I have covered in a lot more detail. In fact, I have shown you how exactly the tiering model works with Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Now, think about this. This is an ideal situation wherein you're going to adopt a specific product. But when we talk about how things are going to work on the ground or how what exactly happens in a specific enterprise altogether, your organization may already have an EPP or an EDR solution. Let's take it, uh, let's think about like this, that you already have an endpoint protection solution. Now the question comes, how you will move forward? What are the steps that you should do? Right now, in these cases, wherein there is already an existing endpoint protection solution, Microsoft has recommended an adoption order for the features and the capabilities that exist in Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And the order is something like this. I mean, the first thing that you should adopt is endpoint detection and response. Then you should go for threat and vulnerability management. Then you should go for next gen protection. I mean, implementing all the advanced capabilities. Then you should have attack surface reduction. And lastly, you can go ahead and configure your own automatic investigation and remediation actions. If still there is something left, then you have Microsoft threat experts. Right, so this is how you should think about your deployment plan in terms of preparing your environment. If you already have a solution, endpoint protection solution, then make sure uh, the anti-malware or the service, the defender service on the endpoint should run in the passive mode because that is something which is required for EDR to work as expected. And then start from EDR itself in terms of knowing if there is any anomaly that is happening on the device altogether. Now, the next step you should think of is setup. Now, again, this is something which is also dependent upon the infrastructure that you have, but I have explained this in a lot more detail that how exactly Microsoft Defender for Endpoint works in the nutshell, what are the different components, which service has what kind of purpose. Now, just to reiterate, it's a cloud native solution. So it works on a licensing model. Make sure you have the right set of licenses assigned. No on-prem dedicated resource is required for this service to work. I mean, there is no dedicated servers required in your on-prem environment because it's a cloud native solution. It's just a website, securitycenter.windows.com, wherein you have to go and configure all the settings and then get the devices onboarded and hopefully things will work as you expect. Okay, now it's an agentless solution. I mean, there is no agent installation required on the device itself. It's just couple of settings that reaches that particular device and the device gets onboarded. Now, when we talk about the most important aspect of setup, you have to make sure that the network requirements are in place. There should be no impaired communication between any of the device that exists in your environment. I mean, this is something which requires a lot of time investments because you know, we know how complicated the network layer is and how exactly it works. But still, this is something which I have covered in a lot more detail. In fact, I have shared the Excel sheet as well. That's officially available on Microsoft documentation. A dedicated link in the description will be there for sure. 
but again this is something which i have covered that network requirements are the most important aspect and you should invest a lot of time in terms of making sure all the endpoints are accessible if there will be any uh, disconnection or if there will be any miscommunication between the device and the endpoint service then the results will not be what you were expecting right so now think about like this you know the deployment type you have prepared your environment you know your end goal this is a stage where you have to reach you made sure all the setup in is in place the next step is to obviously get the devices onboarded to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Now, based on the different platforms, different methods are available. You can choose them as per your requirement because this is something which you might have already decided when you were preparing your environment or when you were planning. Right now, once you have onboarded all the devices, the next thing is to go ahead and configure the respective feature or the service that you want to use. Now, this is also something which you might have already decided that once the devices are getting onboarded, I'm going to use these ABC features, likewise, endpoint detection and response, next gen protection, or attack surface reduction. Now, once you have onboarded the devices, once you have configured everything, obviously there is a purpose behind it and what is that purpose is to see the alerts or is to see the anomalies which results in moving to the last stage which is the monitoring phase itself wherein based on the customization and configuration that you have done alerts will be shown right on the defender portal itself and again as i've said before to reach a stage of xdr capabilities you will inject all this information to your sim solution so that you can have a correlated view in terms of knowing what exactly happening in your environment right and again based on the roles that you have defined initially uh, for security team or for your it team the respective a uh, person will have the authoritative access to go ahead and make changes. Likewise, a security admin can make a configuration change, whereas an IT admin cannot. And again, it all starts with the right set of permissions getting delivered to the right individuals so that they can perform the tasks which are related to them. And in this way, you can actually have a very efficient monitoring defined in terms of knowing what exactly going on in your environment and in terms of making sure the right set of security practices are getting implemented. So according to me, if you follow these five different stages of deployment planning you will have a better deployment plan or you will have a more mature deployment plan if you think that i have missed anything or there should be something more added comment section is there for you please feel free to ask the questions okay so let's talk about a quick summary for what all we have discussed we have discussed about how you should plan your deployment what are the deployment types that are available how you should prepare your environment what are the different stages of deployment now since we have discussed about the deployment strategy we have seen onboarding devices the next thing that i'm going to talk about is threat and vulnerability management thank you so much Thanks for your time. If you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.